Bugatti Veyron everything in the car. Between when the original automaker went out of business in 1952 and when the almighty Veyron 16.4 entered production in 2005, it was a long, rocky road for the Bugatti name. After cementing itself as one of the most venerable and treasured automotive marks during the pre-war period, the desolation of the famed Mulsheim factory immediately following World War II and the subsequent death of brand namesake and visionary Ettore Bugatti in 1947 effectively shuttered the once illustrious brand. After a handful of failed launches, Bugatti was almost back for good in the late 1980s under the vision of Romano Ardioli. Ardioli hoped to revive the mark with his sleek and intricately engineered EB110 supercar, but a recession forced the renaissance supercar brand into early dissolution in 1995. Following the guidance of Volkswagen Group, BAG, mastermind Ferdinand Piet, Vaj purchased the rights to the Bugatti name and immediately began development of one of the greatest hypercars in history. After a string of concepts featuring a spectacular W18 engine, all-wheel drive, and curvaceous exterior design, the production Veyron retained all but the 18-cylinder engine, instead cutting two cylinders and abandoning the W18's three-bank structure for a four-bank quad-turbo W16. Power from this 8.0-liter monster was a tremendous 987 horsepower and 922 pounds to foot of torque, in the regular base level Veyron 16.4, remember, routed to all four wheels through a beefy 7-speed dual-clutch transmission manufactured by Ricardo. This absurd power resulted in equally absurd performance figures. Dashing from 0 to 60 miles per hour takes 2.5 seconds, which may seem commonplace in this era of electric supersedans that brush against the two-second barrier, but consider that the hottest Ferrari of 2005 could only muster the same speed in a lumbering four seconds flat. By the time that Ferrari F430 hit 60 miles per hour, the Veyron is nearly at 100 miles per hour, when the F430 finally kisses its top speed of 196 miles per hour, the Veyron is surging toward its world-beating 253 miles per hour VMAX. All this for an initial price of around $1.25 million. Indeed, that officially certified 253 mile per hour top speed made it the fastest car in the word for a few years, yanking the crown from the mighty McLaren F1 or the Koenigsegg CCR, depending on your definition of production car. This record didn't stand long, as Texas tuner and performance guru Hennessy clocked its venom at 265 miles per hour. Naturally, Bugatti went to work tweaking the Veyron's engine and aerodynamic profile for the 2010 Veyron Super Sport Special Edition that upped output to 1,184 horsepower and 1,106 pounds to foot of torque. Top speed inch to 267.855 miles per hour, reclaiming the laurels until 2017 when the Koenigsegg Agera RS clocked a certified 277 miles per hour. Speaking of special editions, the Veyron has more one-off special variants and limited run versions than any other supercar, or maybe any other car, full stop. Between bespoke color combos that Bugatti deemed worthy of a special name, and limited runs of 5, 10 or 15 cars that adhered to a specific aesthetic, there are more than 25 individual named special editions to collect. Some were callbacks to prominent pre-war Bugattis and famed drivers who piloted Bugattis to victory in period, while others were tie-ins with other luxury brands like Hermes and KPM Porcelain. The Veyron Grand Sport arrived in 2009. A Roadster variant of the existing coupe limited to 150 units, now with a removable roof, the Grand Sport became the fastest convertible in the world, hitting a top speed of 253 miles per hour with a removable rigid Targa-style top installed. Alternate top speeds include 224 miles per hour with the top off, or a piddling 80 miles per hour with the temporary emergency soft top deployed. Naturally, 
potential grand sport buyers were put off at the idea they may be shown up by the faster, more exclusive Super Sport, so the 2012-2015 Grand Sport Vitesse superimposed the Super Sport upgrades onto the drop-top Veyron. After hundreds of millions of dollars over a decade of production, Bugatti completed 450 examples of the Veyron before the current Bugatti Chiron replaced it in 2016, ending the Veyron's reign as the de facto king of all production cars. It's difficult to overstate the impact the Bugatti Veyron had on the collective car consciousness. Many ragged on the Veyron for its conquest of the mighty McLaren F1's long-standing record considering the Bugatti is considerably heavier, more complex, and more luxurious than the McLaren. But like the McLaren F1, the Veyron emerged as one of the landmark cars of history. The Veyron represented a quantum leap forward in what we thought was possible, here was a 1,000 horsepower landbound ballistic missile with a top speed of 253 miles per hour and an interior as luxurious as a Bentley's, all while remaining as drivable and docile as a high-end Audi. Since the day the first Veyron rolled out of the Molzheim workshop, it's remained a symbol of excess and conspicuous consumption, particularly among the new money types that emerged in the early to mid-2000s. Owning a Veyron was an apex power move placed far beyond having made it financially, if you owned a Bugatti Veyron, you were taking a stand as a mogul rather than a merely successful individual. Investment bankers and rappers drove Porsches and Ferraris, while hedge fund managers and label owners drove Veyrons. Even after replacement by the Chiron, the Veyron remains a status symbol of the highest order. While the Veyron was in production, prices of second-hand non-limited edition Veyrons hovered around the half-million mark, before sharply climbing to the seven-figure threshold, where they remain today. If you're looking for a future-proof automotive investment, pick up as many well-specified Veyrons as you can before the collective market realizes that this piece of automotive history is undervalued even at over a million bucks. Looking for a Veyron to fill that hypercar-sized hole in your garage? Here's the good news, it will be very difficult for you to find a stinker. The vast majority of Veyrons were bought and owned by moneyed individuals who didn't balk at the annual maintenance regimen that could climb into six figures territory. If that last statement is remotely shocking to you, I advise you consider investing in a different hypercar. Maintaining a Veyron is notoriously costly, regular service can run in around the $25,000 mark, having a new set of tires fitted cost close to $50,000, as you had to ship the car back to France to make the swap. If you're still in the game after the prior figures didn't scare you off, get in touch with Bugatti. The automaker hasn't specified it will help you find a car, but it likely keeps extensive maintenance and ownership records of every Veyron to ever leave its care over the years, and can likely point you in the right direction. If you have a particular car in mind, I'm sure Bugatti would be more than happy to perform a five-figure pre-purchase inspection before you write the final check. Despite its popularity among fans, the Veyron doesn't come up for sale often, even less so for auctions where the final sale price is public knowledge. With that in mind, RM Sotheby's is the only mainstream auction house with a reliable backlog of sold Bugatti Veyrons to reference. Bugatti Veyron FAQ You have questions about the Bugatti Veyron. Automobile has answers. Here are the answers to some of the most frequently asked Veyron queries. How much does the Bugatti Veyron cost? With a hypercar as iconic as the Veyron, this question was inevitable. When the Veyron first went on sale for the 2005 model year, prices began around the $1.25 million mark, but you can be sure precious few of the original Veyron went for sticker price. When paint, interior options, and special features were added, the price often inched closer to $1.5 million. If you wanted a special edition, you could expect to pay close to $2 million for the privilege. How fast does the Bugatti Veyron go? The party piece of the Bugatti Veyron was always the record-busting top speed, so it's only natural it's one of the first questions that arises. 
If you stick with the original Veyron 16.4, Intrepid owners will see 253 miles per hour. Spend some more coin for the Super Sport World Record Edition, and that climbs to 268 miles per hour. How many Bugatti Veyrons are there? Unlike your typical Ferrari or Lamborghini which might see production in the 3,000 to 10,000 unit range, only 450 Veyrons of various configurations were ever built by the Molsheim Workshop. This includes the Grand Sport, Super Sport, Grand Sport Vitesse, and the rest of the many special editions. Who makes the Bugatti Veyron? Well, this one's easy, Bugatti. Of course, trace that thread far enough, and you'll find that the almighty Volkswagen Group is the parent company of Bugatti as well as of Porsche, Audi, Bentley, Volkswagen, and Ducati.